We're gonna fix you up real good there, job of the cut. Wait a minute. Hello fellow maker, welcome down to the shop. Bill here and today I'm gonna build a prop for my cyberpunk costume. I built this fella in just one day and now I'm gonna build this fella in just one day. I wanted to have a prop for this character and I wanted to make it into a tool, something useful instead of destructive. So I designed this wrench. The idea is this is a giant wrench that I use to fix things, but you could also hit stuff with it if you needed to break it. Anyway, I got a pile of materials here. I think most everything is gonna start with some PVC pipe. I've got a whole bunch of foam. I better get started because I only have a few hours to get this finished. Let's get this build started. My other hand will be there, so the, the grip is like, grip thingy is here. Some sort of pommel. I think I'll make this like a giant nut. Some sort of knob. Some wire dues there, wiry dues. I've designed my wrench and it's time to get started on the build. The first thing I wanna do, I have this coupler, this is just PVC pipe, so I can take my hammer apart, my wrench, hammer. The whammer. The wham, the whammer. We're calling this the whammer, thanks Britt. This coupler in the middle is meant so that I can take my whammer apart and uh, put it in my luggage. <laughs> what I'm gonna do first is glue the coupler on one of these uh, with some PVC cement so that it'll be permanent on one side but loose on the other. <laughs> This will be the handle portion. So this is gonna be like a giant hex nut as the pommel, and I want another one on the top of my whammer. I wanna cut it out of some foam, so over here, I've got some pieces of foam that I wanna stack up, so I have the thickness that I need, and then I can cut it to a hexagon shape. To connect it all, I'm gonna use contact cement. So there's our foam sandwich and I came up with a little hexagon pattern here that I can trace onto my stack O foam and go cut it out. I'm also gonna poke the center there because I'll need to drill a hole in it. There's our giant nut, and it goes right on there. Now, I've also made a sandwich here to make the, uh, I guess this will be the hilt portion, so I'll get started on that. Need to round the corners on these, so I'll use this cup, and we'll do the opposite corner. There we go. All right, I need to drill a hole through this. So, kind of marking where that's gonna go, and we'll go back to the drill press. So there's our cross guard thingy. That'll go like that, I think. Uh, now I just need to build this handle part. I have my design. I could just cut it out, but I don't wanna damage the original. So I'm tracing on some parchment paper here. This isn't the best, it's kind of waxy, but it's, it's the most see-through paper I have right now. But I'm just tracing this handle thing so that I can use this as a stencil to cut it out of foam. The good news is that if this marker wears off after I've cut this out, that's okay. I just need the outline. Although it's staying pretty well. Here's the shape for my guard. Now I'm tracing it on, on a piece of foam here. I gotta layer a bunch of these together and put a wire in it, so the order of operations is pretty important. Uh, I think I'm gonna cut this piece out first and figure out where that wire needs to go and then cut out the sandwich piece that goes with it and then the outer detail pieces. That'll all make sense in just a moment. Okay, so let's go to the bandsaw for this guy.
So this is where I'm gonna put a reinforcement wire and I went through my collection of wire and found this piece of copper that should work. Um, I just wanna bend it so that it can poke into there. So when it connects, it's got some extra support and then it'll curl around and create some extra strength for this handle guard thing. I'll round that over so it doesn't poke out the end. All right, I used the rotary tool to make a trench on this side so I can place that in there and flip the whole thing over and just press down and there is a line left where that wire will go on the other side. So I can carve the trench here and then glue this all together and then cut out the other side. So this is two millimeter foam and I'm gonna cut out this extra layer of detail for both sides and this will get glued on to our wire embedded sandwich. So I'm cutting this a little oversized. We'll clean up the edges once everything's glued together. The barge isn't really tacky anymore, so I can lay the wire through the middle here. Just follow that like so. There we go. And now I can cut this out along the edge of this guy. These layers are gonna go on, and all of this work is just so that I have this nice inset detail from this layer of two millimeter foam. I traced where I don't wanna put contacts, man. It wouldn't be the end of the world if I covered that in glue, but if I can avoid it, I will. This is gonna get glue on it, that's gonna get glue on it. I'll stick these together and then we'll clean everything up. Just gonna line everything up as close as possible on all the edges. That looks nice. Do the other side. So what I have now is this nice detail in there and this handle has a wire running through it so it's nice and strong. All I have to do is go over all these rough edges with the rotary tool. I put barge on the foam but I'm also gonna put hot glue on there so that when the uh, metal rod goes in there it hopefully drags some with it. That uh... That appeared to work really well. <laughs> I mean, of course it went really well. I think I can actually pose the wire in here a little bit, but I'm pretty happy with how it is so far. I can pretend like I'm grabbing that, like I'm pulling it to squeeze the jaws together and I can hold it two-handed like a giant smashy hammer. Whammer. I found this knob. This is part of an old air compressor, I believe. And I wanna put that on here. And I think what I'm gonna do is attach it with a screw, which I dropped, there it is. So I need to drill a hole through this knob. That'll go in there, and then that'll get attached through there. And I'll probably just hot glue this into the foam, but I'm gonna wait until this is all painted, because this does not need to be painted. I'm gonna add a little like faux rivet there. I figured that'd be the pivot for this, or faux pivot. Nice. I'm cutting out these bits of foam here that will be stacked together. I'm gonna to stack it four pieces high to make the jaws of my whammer. One will be for the top jaw, one will be for the bottom jaw, so I have to cut these. About 13 inches should be here. Mm-hmm. Just gonna cut all four layers all at once. Perfect. All right, now I can glue all these together to make my jaws. Freehanding this, cause I'm running out of time. Like that. Hey, while I'm working on that, I want to take a moment to thank our incredible patrons over at patreon.com slash punished props. It's because of your support that we're able to make all these wonderful videos in this fantastic workshop with our incredible team. You heard me right, Punished Props Academy is four people now, so your support is helping a total of three families. Good on you, and thank you. 
If you would like to join in on the fun and get access to behind the scenes vlogs, early access on all of our build videos and extra credit videos for all of our build videos, head on over there right now and consider dropping us a buck. Thanks so much, let's get back to the build. Oh yeah, look at that. This can go on the top eventually. There's always a part in a project where you have enough of it put together that you can play with it. And that part is right now. And I'm pretty happy with that. If I was gonna pose with this like over my shoulder, have this thing over here, have the cool head over there, not bad. Now all I have to do is add all those fiddly details. I think this should have a claw, like a hammer. So I'm gonna cut out a little V right there. Yay. Now I can pull out really big nails. Gotta make room for what will be the threaded rod to go into both ends there. Oop, right there. That'll do. That's gonna go in there. Just need to cut that. So that's gonna be like a threaded rod and it will extend, continue extending through like that. And then the motor will spin it. So this is gonna wrap up into a tube. I thought for sure I would have a tube that was this size, maybe PVC pipe, but I don't. So I gotta make my own tube. This seam, I'm not being very careful with it, just throwing it together. This will be uh, on the back against the main PVC pipe, so you'll never see this, I'm not too concerned. I'm gonna cap the ends of my tube here with more foam, of course. Just gonna throw a little barge around the lip here. And then this piece is big enough to cover the whole thing, so I'm just gonna smear glue all over that, and I'll trim it to a circle after it gets glued on. Boop. Ah. I made a tube. Um, I'm making a, a stencil for the next layer of detail that's going on the front here to make sure it matches the, the piece I actually cut out. That's what I'm tracing. And that is our new template. I'll do the same thing for the bottom jaws here. Yeah, that'll work. Now we trace. This is a two millimeter foam. And these pieces will get glued down with more contact cement, but I want to make sure that I know where to put the contact cement on my main big piece. So I'll cover that, but I'll only put this contact cement on that part. Just sort of lightly touching this down. I could still pull it up if I want to, but I'm just going around and making sure everything is as close to the matching edges as possible before I really squeeze and push it down. For these small panels, I'm just using super glue to tack them down because it's a lot faster than using contact cement. I can spray the area with a little activator and then position my piece and squish it down. Give it a couple seconds and that's it. So this is gonna become a threaded screw. <laughs> By wrapping uh, foam around it, we'll make a thread. Come on, come on. I'm trying to focus. Oh, look, 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 you did that. You see that? That was you. To attach my foam, I've got some super glue and I'm gonna tack it down. All right, now that it's attached, I can wrap this around, leaving a gap like that, and that will make it look kind of like a threaded rod. So that'll go in there, and that can go in there, and that can go in there. And it looks kind of like a screw. So this is like a motor, <laughs> I'm calling it a motor, that's gonna spin that. And I wanna put a little gear of some kind on here. So this would be the part that the um, belt goes around, and then this would be like the thing that keeps it from sliding off. Fantastic. I'm cleaning up all my edges here, and you can see the, the rotary tool is rotating in that direction, 
pushing the material down, which works great over here, but on this side, it's prone to pull at the, the layer, the additional layer there. Fortunately, my Fordham can spin in either direction. So this is, this is forward, and then there's a switch I can hit, and I can put it in reverse, and it'll rotate the other way. So now, when I sand that part, it pushes that down and won't pull at the little bit of a seam there that might get pulled apart. This is gonna push it back down. We've got all our foam parts laid out and just about ready for paint. This is gonna be a very quick paint job. The first thing I wanna do is just heat seal it. I have a knife here so I can hold my foam bits and then I have my torch. And I'm just gonna gently kiss everything with a little bit of flame to seal up that outer layer of foam. Doing a very quick paint job because I have to leave soon. <laughs> so I just have some silver paint. I'm, I'm watering it down a tiny bit so that I can get it to spread really well. And then I'm just covering everything. This thin layer will hopefully dry very fast and give us a nice sort of base to work from on the rest of the paint. Before putting any silver on these parts, I wanna hit them with black first to make sure I cover up all that white. First layer of paint is drying. Now the shaft, I'm gonna cover it in aluminum tape. No painting necessary, it's actual metal. It's got an adhesive on the back of it. It should work very well for our purposes. So this portion here is gonna get some tape on it. I'm just gonna try and get it to lay down as flat as possible. That's a seam right there and I can just go in and Trim it. There we go. Got some wrinkles on there. I'm just using a piece of plastic, or in this case, a marker, to flatten those out a bit. And to add some really cool texture, I've got some steel wool here, and I can just give it kind of a brushed look. So this first layer wasn't didn't cover a lot. It was kind of more of a maybe a primer layer. Um, I definitely need to do more. So I'm putting another layer of this silver paint on uh, without watering it down. Hopefully we get a bit more coverage on that. For now, I'm just covering everything with silver again. These screw threads here, I painted them black and now I can just brush the paint across the top of the threads and I wanna leave the lower areas black. That way they've got that nice contrast. I've got some darker paint here. This is uh, pewter, an Angelus acrylic leather paint. I was kind of hoping it would be even darker than this, just so it'd be a little bit of contrast on these different pieces. But I'm thinking instead what I might do is do some paint chipping. So these parts here would be, uh, we let this dry and then we'll paint it a color, but it make it look like it's chipping down to this color. So we're gonna give that a shot and see how it turns out. It might be crazy because it's like eight o'clock at night. <laughs> And I gotta fly to a convention with this thing uh, tomorrow, but we'll see how it goes. Doing a little masking, I'm gonna airbrush the jaws on here. <laughs> oh, uh, this, uh, this is for painting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It is actually for painting. We're gonna do some paint chipping and we're using the toothpaste as a mask. I'm not actually gonna use a toothbrush, I'm gonna use a paintbrush. <laughs> but uh, I'm laying down toothpaste anywhere I want this silver, or in this case it's this pewter paint, to come through. So this is like the, the head of this rivet. I will mask that off. And then we're gonna put a color on this and then we'll wipe all of it off. But right now I'm just putting this delicious, minty, fresh, masking fluid on the edges and anywhere that this paint would have chipped off. And since this is supposed to be like a high industrial crazy sort of thing, I'm gonna put a lot of chipping on there. It's gonna be great. Paint's still a little wet, but I'm impatient. So I'm gonna wipe away the toothpaste and look at that. We got some nice paint chipping on there and our rivets are uncovered. That worked out okay. I guess we could do that on the rest of them. This prop won't have any gingivitis. Thank goodness. But I figured that these would be like super 
super chipped because this is this part's gonna hit stuff, especially on on these corners and this face here. Nice. Trying to use this brush and this water to drag as much of that toothpaste off the surface as possible. Oh, it just smells so good. For the handle grip, I want to put some medical tape around it, but I want it to have like a spiral around it. So I've got this hoodie string. I don't know. I found this in a corner of my shop. I'm going to tape it down there and then wrap it around this thing and then put medical tape over it. That looks pretty great. And now we wrap it. There we go. Cool. That looks great. And it's already getting weathered because my hands are really dirty. This is our motor. And to make it look more legit, I've got some caution tape. I'm just gonna put a piece around it before it gets glued down. I figure this is like one of the moving parts. So this would be a place you would wanna be cautious. This part on the back is where it's gonna get glued down. So I'm not too concerned with this gross seam. You're gonna see this. It is time to start gluing things together. Make sure I don't accidentally put this on upside down. It goes on like this, just like that. Now I'll run some hot glue on this and then shove it on and we should be all set. And hop. A little extra squeeze out. We'll cut that off once it's nice and cool. Like that. Ta da! Hop, 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 hop. And I'll just mash that in there. Make sure it's mostly straight. It is. That looks wonderful. And then this motor is going to drive that. So it's going to be kind of off the side here. What's going to be the best way to attach that? <laughs> Decided to attach this to that with screws and I need holes to be able to screw through it. And then I'm going to cover those with this tape decoration. I just need to get these through there. So I need to drill a slightly larger hole. <sighs> Hopefully I can do this and mark where I want that to go. This can go in there carefully. I don't want to lose it. There we go. There's one. So I got two screws and I should be able to line them up. Nope. <laughs> I drill this hole a little north. Got two screws and I should be able to line them up perfectly. Oh, it's got to go lower. Crap. A little farther south. There we go. First try. There we go. That's gonna cover those holes. There we go. Now I know technically this doesn't make any sense. There should be some sort of gear on here uh, to drive this, but uh, this is just how it's gonna be. We're gonna have to use our imaginations a little bit. So that'll go in here, around there, and then I'll tack this end back over on that spot. Of course, even though it's the future, everything's gotta have exposed wires. I've got these foam dowels that'll be like a really cool thick wire. I also have some normal, real, actual wire to wrap around it. Actually, I can poke a hole in here, like that, and feed my wire through, and a little hot glue. Now this will just wrap around here. And it's okay if it's loose, because even though, again, it's the future, these things always seem to be like haphazardly strung together with like loose wires and stuff. That looks good too. This will wrap around here a couple times and then plug in like right there maybe. Very cool. Very nice. And in you go. And then this would attach like that. <laughs> Bonk. Okay, let's not get too excited. 
This is still far too clean. So I'm gonna grab some weathering powders, do a very quick pass, add a little bit of dirt and grime, and then, then we can call it done. Go for your knob. My knob! Ah, I almost forgot my knob! This is one of the first, like one of the first things we did today. And in we go. And this should even still turn. So this is like setting the, how, how much the jaws wanna chomp. More chomp. And then you push this and it makes it chomp. It is time to make a mess. I've got my Fuller's Earth here, a light sort of dusty powder, and I'm gonna do one pass of just dusting this up a little bit. This is pretty good. I do think I need to come back in with something darker to give it a little more contrast. Got this darker powder here and I'm being a little more surgical with it and just kind of putting it in some of the crevices. It seems to stick a lot better than the uh, Fuller's Earth. Now you can get this kind of powder to, to stick if it doesn't want to. Once it's down, you can put some alcohol or some other solvent in your airbrush and just spray it, and that should get it to stick down. Since all of this is gonna be down in the crevices of this, I'm probably not gonna accidentally wear it off with my hands. I'm not too worried about that, but if it becomes a problem in the future, that's something I might do. Just reapply all my weathering powders and then hit it with a little rubbing alcohol through the airbrush or something similar. Some additional caution tape. Oh, and that looks nice. There we go. Yes! Ha! <laughs> you know, I was thinking the area in the middle here is a little thin. There's a lot going on up here and a lot going on down there, but I think I'm mostly gonna pose like this. So you don't even see that part. You see this, that, it looks pretty fantastic. All I have left to do now is put on the costume and see how the entire ensemble looks. Let's do it. And there is our true one day build hammer. This was just an idea in the morning and a fully completed prop by about 10 or 11 p.m. that night. Everything we built this out of was something that we already had in the shop. We couldn't waste any time going to get new stuff, so we just did what we could with what we had on hand, including using parts of old power tools. This was a really fantastic challenge. Just a quick prop build I wanted to put together before I ran off to TwitchCon. Maybe that's something you would enjoy doing, giving yourself one day to build a prop from scratch with everything you have on hand. If you do something like that, I'd love to see it. Tag me on Twitter, I'm at Chinbeard. Show me photos of everything you're working on. If you have any questions about this build, please let me know down in the comments. As always, all the tools and materials that I use will be linked down in the description. That's all I have for you today. Thank you again so much for checking out the video and I'll catch you in the next build. Pretty cool, right? Right? Brit's not nodding. Ha, ha, ha.